Crazy Jim Vance, as called by the McCoys, or Uncle Jim as called by the Hatfields, was born about 1832, he was the grandson of Tud Valley pioneer Abner Vance and the uncle of William Anderson Devil Ants Hatfield. He is one of the most controversial characters of the Hatfield and McCoy feud. One side saying he was bloodthirsty and behind Asa McCoy's death as well as the New Year's Day massacre of the McCoys. Another side saying he was portrayed as something he wasn't. That he was an upstanding part of the community. One reason some say he was murdered actually was because he owned several thousand acres of valuable land, smack dab in the heart of the billion-dollar coal field, James was murdered by a gang from Kentucky led by Frank Phillips on January 8, 1888, shot point-blank range in the head. Some of the men with Frank didn't even know why they were after Jim when asked, besides they were just told to come along. Was Jim an innocent angel? We aren't saying that, but always keep an open mind when other people are telling the tale that you can't tell anymore, because you're in the ground. Jim Vance can be found on Find a Grave, but as usual, the cemetery has no address or GPS. So locating it isn't that easy. This is the first video of his final resting place to date. All right, here. Uh, way up, it's a really long hauler to get way back in here. Uh, Jim Vance, his grave is right back in there somewhere. Uh, now I stopped here, I saw this guy here, he had a Free Will Baptist Church van in front of his house and I, I, I went, yeah, I, I was a Free Will Baptist minister for a few years, so I, I knew the worst case scenario, he's gonna offer me lunch. He's not going to shoot at me. <laughs> I, I, I know Baptists well. They, they like to eat more than they like to fight. So like I said, more likely he's going to offer me lunch before he starts shooting. So I figured he'd be a good guy to ask. But uh, yeah, real nice guy. Uh, he told me what to avoid, where to go, all this kind of stuff. Be careful about stepping on the other lady's property. She's not real crazy about visitors. So yeah, okay, all right. But uh, he said, just go up behind his house and go behind hers and go back up through there. He said, it's about a half a mile walk. So I've got me a good little climb, as usual, to get where we're going. It's way back in there. But this one is one that uh, Heather and I actually came up here once before, and we never did find this thing. But I came up today. I had a little bit of time to play with today. So I just stopped, and I was just asking you know, I, I, I had a pretty good idea head of, head of Thacker Holler, but the problem with that is the head of a holler moves. The mouth of the holler, the entrance, it's always in the same place unless they move the road. The head of the holler, a head of a holler can tend to move. All it takes is somebody going up here, dozing off a new spot and building another house, and now the head of the holler's up there. Another guy builds a house, the head of the holler's further. And so, you know, that's just how it works. But luckily for me, the head of the holler this time was gated. It gated at the end of his land. So I'm going to head back up there and start climbing the mountain, guys. Wish me luck. Hopefully we'll find it without too much trouble. Okay. I'm about a couple hundred yards in. Out of breath already. <laughs> Got a little creek crossing here. You gotta watch these puppies. They'll get slick and you go right in the creek if you ain't careful. But now it should be somewhere up this old ATV path. My new friend Dewey down here <laughs> by the end of the holler. He said to come up here. He said you'll go up there a little ways. He said you see a little wire box. Hello. He said go right by it and keep going on up he says about a half a mile back in through here so i've got me a good little walk ahead of me but uh it's way up in here he said but i just thought i'd show y'all some of this it seems like no matter where i go there's a mountain to be climbed <laughs>
All right. I guess I'm gonna turn the camera off for a minute, hit mule gear, and see if we can't get up this mountain. Talk to y'all in a few, hopefully. Hopefully it won't take too long. I won't have to climb too much. Already come up. Oh Lord, whatever. 60, 70 feet, something like that, whatever. Not a lot of altitude, but it's all rocky and rough and wet and slippery. But we'll get there. <clears throat> Not the first time I went looking for a graveyard in the rain. Probably won't be the last either. The place is really pretty. Beautiful little spot. Look at this. Just mountains, trees, animals. There's a ton of deer. I pulled up and stopped. There's about eight of them. All in one big group looking at me. <sighs> well, <clears throat> guess what? My new buddy Dewey gives pretty good instructions. He gives pretty good directions. He said, come up here. You're looking for two big white oaks. One, two. He said, you'll see a ditch. Big deep ditch runs right in between them. Big ditch runs right between them. Just below the lower big tree, you'll find Jim Vance. Guess what? Guess who we found? You can see the original stone right there and that one was added later. And according to Dewey, he says that uh, that they're coming back sometime in the spring. And the, um, I think he said the Historical Society, something along those lines, uh, came up and had, had him show them where this place was. And um, they're gonna come up and do, you know, more of a, a historical marker, that kind of thing considering it is Jim Vance, you know, I mean, this is, this is a historic site, even any way you want to slice it up. This is, this is definitely a historic grave. I mean, you know, realistically speaking, Jim Vance, the one and only Jim Vance is right there, just a few feet away from us. You know, that's, that's kind of hard to imagine, isn't it? You know, it's like, hey, Jim, this is YouTube. YouTube, meet Jim. <laughs> But there's a few more. I can see a little one. There's only a few, it looks like. I see a couple that looks like headstones down in there. And you can see one right there. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's manufactured or homemade. I'm going to go take a look at it here in a minute. And kind of look around a little bit. But man, we are really up in the woods here. He wasn't joking. He said it was about a half a mile up through there. And I mean, you can see the top of the mountain. It's It's just right up there. I'm not that far from it. I came up the mountain a long way, <clears throat> but uh, didn't have any trouble finding it. Uh, it looks like there are others here, uh, you know, like right here. Look at this. No indicator of who, but you can clearly see a headstone and a footstone and about three foot distance in between the two of them. This was somebody's child. This is a child's grave. Now, a lot of these, these old graves like this, that's very, very common to see just a rock or nothing at all. Well, like Jim's, you know, Jim Vance. He wasn't exactly poor. That's what he had. And you can see he had a rock. He just had an old, regular old stone. You know, no writing on it or anything. But uh, that was actually very common. You see that in a lot of these old cemeteries. But this one, it's got, uh, it looks like someone's put some fence, some fencing around it. Um, yeah, whatever, several decades ago. But the fence has just about had it these days. And there's a bunch of trees where they fell on top of the grave. You can see a bunch of trees right on it right there. But yeah, 
there he is, the one and only Jim Vance. And it only took us two tries to find him. <laughs> but then again, guys, he, he is really out there. I mean, you know, he's really out. He's, this side is really out there. I mean, you go, you go way, 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 way out in the middle of nowhere and then go up a holler. And then when you get all the way to the head of the holler, then you start climbing the mountain. But like I said, there's there's several others I can see once I stand in here talking. I can see, I don't know how well you can tell it. There's a dip right here. There's a dip there. There's one there. There's one right there. There's one too. So there are several unmarked graves here for sure. And you know, like I said before, you know, mention other other videos. You know, they're they're pretty much lost to time, you know, without a marker. Uh, you can kind of get an idea on more modern cemeteries where, say, like, um, you know, they sold plots. And you know for sure that the, the person you're looking for won't be in this section or that section because it was sold plots that went to other people. So you know the historical figures won't be in that part. So you know where to kind of give you an idea where to start. But this one is a totally different ball game because there are no, you know, there's no recognizable landmarks here. Two, two, two trees, that's what he said, two white oaks. You know, just that's how you find it is two trees. That one right there and that one. Two big white oaks sitting here. That's how you find this place. But anyhow, I'm gonna go over here and see if I can't find any more since I'm here. There's a dip right there. On the other side of that rock, you can see where a grave's sunken in, has collapsed right there. But this one, I want to go see who this is. There's little scrub trees here, uh, about head height, something like that, six feet, give or take. But you can tell there's a lot of people, a lot of locals hunt here as well. There's a, a deer stand right there in that tree. And where was it? There's another one right there too. A nicer one. So there's, this is some, there's one too. As a matter of fact, there's another deer stand right there. There's three of them. One, two, three. Within eye shot. Look at that. He's not going to stay long. He's going to fall. Now right here's one. Unknown. There's a stone laying here. You can tell that's a grave. But all you can see is a stone. You can't tell anything else about it. Uh, go around. Go around that one. And I want to see this one. I can tell it's a baby. It's a child. I can tell that already has the, the lamb on top of the stone. Those are usually reserved for children. And this is, let me get around it. I don't want to step on it. Uh, let's see. This is M. E. Adkins, born March 25th, 1894 to August 29th, 1910. So, not quite child, but very, very young adult. Of course, just about anything back then, you know, would, you know, the, the, there's been stories, what was it, the, some pharaoh, I'm not sure which one it was, died from a toothache. You know, he just got an infection from a toothache and it killed him. You know, a lot of stuff these days that you could just simply take a pill for back in the day there were no antibiotics and just you know a little a little cut just a small cut on your finger or something could actually kill you it's wild isn't it it's a good thing we've progressed i suppose in a lot of ways we've progressed in a lot of ways we've digressed as well though which i'm sure you guys know all about that don't need me to tell you that It's a really pretty place though. Like I said, it's just back in the woods, nowhere. 
all off to itself. And here's a couple. There was some some markings. I can't see what what it says or anything, but there was something scratched on that rock at one time. And that one, this is probably uh, probably husband and wife. Something like that, family, side by side. Uh, here's some more. None of these are marked. You can see the little dents in the ground. All right, there's one. Just two stones. There's one. And there's one. And once again, there's some scratches on it but you can't tell what it says. And there's one collapsing. You can see that one collapsing in on itself. You step on that, you're in a whole new world of hurt. I mean, not just falling into a hole, guys, you're falling into a grave if you step on the wrong one. You know, there's a difference between a rock slipping and you get your foot wet and you know breaking through someone's grave because you stepped on it and these old graves they can most certainly do that now here's one by a big boulder there's no no name no stone nothing on the boulder itself but there's a fence a fence around this one you can see the right there you can see the wire there was a fence or well is a fence what's left of one around here so that's that's definitely a grave there and the fence is the only thing that gives it away okay what else do we have there's one this is one of those really older really old graves, graveyards, I should say. Um, a lot of these, it's very common, like I said, to not have any markers of any kind. And right there is a good example. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but that one has sunk. That's probably two, three feet, something like that. And up here's a couple. I can just imagine these people bringing, you know, family up here in ox carts or wagons. Just anything you can do, because I, I guarantee you, there's no way you'd carry a, a coffin up that hill. It would kill six men bringing a coffin up here by hand. Okay. This one is Willis. That sounds familiar. Samuel Willis, that sounds familiar. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Samuel C. Uh, hang on, son of Samuel and Rhoda Willis. Born 1895. And died March 28th. It's my sister's birthday. In 1914. That's wild, isn't it? That's a, that's a child, too. It's a young person. But, you know, it's just kind of hard to imagine. You know, people that are born and live their whole lives. And pass away and all this stuff. Before you were even born. You know, the things these people could have seen. The things these people could tell you. The stories they could tell you. You know, just blows your mind. That one, I can see M A R. Well, I'm assuming March something. It could be a name, but like I said, all you can see is the first three letters M A R. Uh, there's a couple stones up there. That's the best way to get through this stuff. Probably through here. Very thorny. Ow. 
Trust me, it's very thorny. <sighs> now here's two by this tree here. That one is a stone. And you can see these trees have grown right between these two graves. They're right in the graves. These two trees are, these two massive trees. So you tell me how long these graves have been here. Uh, just for reference, I mean, that thing's big. And he's been here a long time. But let's see if we can see a name. Deer rubbings, right there on the tree. See with a deer, when they do that, they'll rub it off with their horns and clear it off. Marking their territory. It's their version of a no trespassing sign to other deer. Uh, this is William, son of Leonard and, sorry, Natalia Schnell, uh, 1917 to 1919's two year old. Rest in peace. And right there's the footstone. I should have noticed that. That's awful close for an adult. I should have noticed that, but I didn't. And back here, you can't see there's no stone, no name, no rock, no marker of any kind. Uh, it's just past the fence just a little bit, and it's that one's sunken in, that one's sunken in. There's a bunch of these. This is probably all family right here. This is probably the all, all the same family. They're all within the same fence line. It usually, you know, signifies a family plot. But even back in the day, you know, it's you had family plots, but you didn't always do the marker stones. And there's some more. You crawl under. And through, hang on, there we go. There's one, just a little, barely see a stone sticking up and a little dip, a little dip in the ground. The tree's growing up out of the grave. Wow. This, grave's been, this graveyard's been sitting a long time. It's got to the point where the the tall trees up there create a canopy and uh, it shades everything down here. Most of the stuff, the little scrub brush doesn't get that big. Well, once the summertime gets here, the growing season, it's all shaded. And you can see something. I'm not sure what. Right dead center of your screen. I don't know if you can see that or not. Something has a nest way up in that tree. Some hawk or something. I'm fixed him up a nest up there. It's a good spot. Ain't nobody gonna be bothering him up there. <coughs> I don't know how far this graveyard actually goes. It's still going though, so I can see dips. Right there, no markers, no stones. There's a couple. There's one grave has markers. Uh, that is all I say. That's the only markers within eyesight. And this one here, I mean, look at that. There's a grave right there and a grave right here. That is right in the center of them. Let me go around this one. This one looks short. Yeah, it is. This is a little short one. This is another child's grave. It was a lot more common back in the day than it is these days. Uh, I remember my mom saying that uh, her, her parents, my grandparents, had 12 children and only three of them lived. Well, that was very common back in the day. I mean, not just feuds, violence. You know, the, the entire area was called Bloody Mingo for a reason. 
you know, not just the feuds, uh, which there was more than one. There were several. But, uh, you know, not just, like I said, not just the feuds. It was also the mine wars. And uh, just generally speaking, when you're this far back out in the country like they were back then, civilization was weeks or months away. That means police, you know, any sort of law enforcement was also weeks away. So a lot of things got handled. Let's just say a lot of things got handled locally, if you get my meaning. All right, I don't know. I don't know if there's any on this side. I'm assuming there probably are. That whole area is probably filled with graves and only a handful of markers. I'm gonna try to come up. That was very brushy through there. I'm gonna try to come up and see if I can come up and come down behind it and see if there's any more coming on up this way. Very beautiful place. Can you imagine what this looks like in the summer months? Oh, it's beautiful. A little bit of every kind of wildlife you can imagine here. Uh, Southern West Virginia, we have bears and bobcats and coyotes and all kinds of crazy stuff here rattlesnakes copperheads <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff but uh, which i'm sure you know that probably played a factor you know back in the day anti-venom you know you're out working in the field run up on a rattlesnake guess what i'm sure that happened a lot i think some of these look like they could in fact be graves a couple of those stones just look suspicious they look like they could have been deliberately set but i'm not sure look at that it's just nature when god intended it to be guys right there uh there's just something about it you know it's i guess it's in your dna you know you're just it's in your blood, you know, to to seek that sort of thing and go have fun and adventures and live your life and see what's out there and see what's what's on the other side of the next ridge. Let's go find out. Spirit of adventure, guys. That's what it's all about right there. Imagine coming up here during the summer months. There is no way you're gonna get through here. This is a winter time only kind of thing. And you can see somebody's got, got them a deer stand up in the tree there. I wish you guys well. And rest in peace. So, guys, we'll talk to you a little bit later. Thank you for coming along. We found Jim Vance. So, we accomplished something today. And you guys have a really good day. And I appreciate you for coming along. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Till next time.